Good morning, everybody. The big day is finally here. Uh, I'm going to be out and about doing my rounds most of election day uh, at polling places, uh, at canvassing board meetings, uh, etc. So we're going to try and keep everybody posted. Uh, for real time updates, you can go to the FLA Squeeze Twitter handle. Again, FLA Squeeze. Uh, hopefully we'll get some content out on this YouTube channel as well. I uh, wanted to walk you through what I'm going to be looking at and where I'm going to be looking specifically election night uh, in, in terms of statewide races and, and some other uh, things going on. So 7 p.m., uh, polls close in the eastern time zone, which is uh, represents about 95% of the population of Florida um, or more. I look immediately at Pasco County, which is a county which has continued to trend Republican and ex-urban county just north of Tampa. Uh, if the margins are massive here for Trump and for Rick Scott, it could be a quick call in Florida. Pinellas County, which is the county which includes St. Petersburg and Clearwater. That's another county I look at because it's a very purple county. It's one of the most purple urban counties in the country. Uh, Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton underperformed here uh, after Barack Obama had racked up fairly big margins in 2008 and 2012. It is also where we have the one um, congressional district in the state where the DCCC and the NRCC have played. Anna Paulina Luna, who is a, a bit of a, a strange bird, um, she's out there like a Marjorie Taylor Greene or a Lauren Boebert. She is the Republican incumbent. Uh, she's facing Whitney Fox, who has a, a, had been a very good Democratic challenger, proved to be a very strong candidate. Um, 7.30 p.m., I'm looking at Osceola County. Uh, this is not a completely original thought. Uh, Steve Kornacki apparently has been talking this up on his rounds on uh, NBC News and MSNBC and uh, various podcasts he's on. I, I know it's also a county um, that uh, Harry Enten on CNN has talked about. So, uh, but this is where there's a heavy Puerto Rican vote, but I would also point out this is a county that even though it has voted Democratic in the last four presidential elections, flipped hard for George W. Bush back in 2004 when there was a Hispanic voter surge for Bush. It had voted, it had voted for um, Democrats in 96 and 2000. And it is also a county which Ron DeSantis won in 2022. So if there is a big surge of Hispanics going to the Republicans, you're going to see it in Osceola County. And it is also going to tell us that the Puerto Rican issue, the issue that came out of that Madison Square Garden rally, maybe doesn't have as much salience in Pennsylvania as many think it might, because this is a county with a plurality of Puerto Ricans. There are more Puerto Rican voters uh, in Osceola County than white voters. Most of them are registered as NPAs. There's actually a majority of Port registered Puerto Ricans in Osceola County who have registered in neither party. Very few have registered as Republicans. Some have registered as Democrats. More have registered as Democrats, but the majority are NPAs. So that's 7.30. 8 p.m., um, we're going to look at the Dem margins in Broward and Orange County. Broward is uh, Fort Lauderdale area. Orange is Orlando. Um, those are the two most Democratic large urban counties in the state. If the margins are high for Harris and for Lucrasel Powell, we may not be able to make a call. Uh, of the state for the Republicans right away. If the margins are reduced, and by reduced I mean the margin is only about 120,000 votes or so in Broward, uh, 100 to 120,000 votes, and it's maybe 40,000 in Orange, and, and Palm Beach might be another county to look at uh, here, maybe Palm Beach is a county that um, uh, it's, it's a dead heat at this point, then you begin to think there's gonna be a call coming for Trump and for Rick Scott soon after that, 8.30 p.m. Uh, I think we either get a call for Scott and Trump, that's how quickly we count in the state, or it's going to be a long night. And if it is a long night, um, many of the legislative seats that um, the Republicans have, particularly in the state house, where uh, I feel they're overextended with 85 seats and 120 uh, uh, person body, I think a lot of those legislative seats become uh, vulnerable. And as the night goes, we're going to be tracking those very closely here, uh, as well as the Hillsborough County state attorney's race, where Andrew Warren, a very popular Democrat, uh, I think maybe potentially the Democrats' best statewide candidate, uh, was removed by Governor Ron DeSantis uh, because of the abortion issue. Uh, 
uh, removed quite uh, improperly, in my opinion, and in the opinion of others. However, uh, the courts have allowed DeSantis to appoint a replacement, and Warren is, is running for his old seat. So that's something to watch as well. Uh, we will continue to update you throughout the day. Be safe out there, and um, enjoy Election Day.